welcome back knitters. This is Jana with Pearl Together. In this week's little technique video, I want to show you how I prefer to weave in my ends as I go along when doing two colors, stranded color work, fair isle color work, any kind of color work actually. So what follows is just a little tutorial on weaving in the ends as you go and starting a new color yarn and then the outgoing yarn. You'll see what I mean in a moment. And then I'll also show you the way that is traditionally done with the duplicate stitch and weaving in the ends after that. If you're going to weave in the ends later after you're finished with your project, and that's totally fine too. Either way, it totally works. I'm sure there's lots of other ways too. So if you know of other things and a different way that you find to be helpful, drop me a comment down below. All right, before I get started, I want to give a big hearty thank you to my newest patrons, Elizabeth Clendenning, Patricia Cargyle, Jennifer Lutz, Linda Hindman, and Robin Fight. Thanks so much for supporting the channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together, and you can see what I'm offering in trade for your support. Let's get started. Okay, when adding in a new color, I like to begin eight or 10 stitches before I'm actually gonna knit with the color. I'm gonna start weaving in the tail of the incoming yarn, and then we can have it ready to use as soon as we hit the beginning of the round marker, which in my case is this gold ring, and then the others are silver. So I'm eight or 10 stitches before I know. I've looked ahead as I'm going. I always kind of look ahead on the chart, and I know what's gonna, what's about to happen. So what I wanna do is take this tail, and I'm gonna have the tail laying this way with the end of it off to the right because I want it to be heading this direction. We're gonna pick it up and knit with it at the beginning of the round. So I'm just, you know, I'm gonna leave an inch or so hanging out here and I'm just gonna go in as if to knit my next stitch and I'm gonna lay this over the top. I'm not gonna pull it through or anything. I'm just gonna lay it over the top and hold it down in the back with my fingers. Then I knit this next stitch and I take this yarn and lay it over like that. Okay, so now you can see that that is laying over the strand of the darker blue. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and knit. Now the next knit stitch that I do is actually gonna pin that down. If you look, this next stitch, when I wrap it, it's gonna pin it down and secure it. Okay, so then the next time I go in and knit, I'm gonna take my new yarn, lay it over, do the wrap, bring it back down so it's just over the top here, and then draw that through like normal. Then the next stitch, you can tell, you can see what's gonna happen. When I wrap, that's gonna pin that down and secure it. So I just like to do that the first, I don't know, you could probably get away with even four to six stitches uh, before you're actually gonna begin knitting with it. I'm just kind of doing everything bigger and exaggerated just to be able to show you. So, all right, I've reached the beginning of the round now, and this is my last weaving in part. So I slip my marker and check what's coming next on my pattern when I'm actually gonna to begin to knit with this new yarn. So I'm gonna drop this one because this is gonna become the contrasting color. So I want, since I'm right hand dominant, I want my contrast color, or sorry, the pattern color to be over on the left and the background color to be on the right in my dominant hand. And this new yarn is going to become the background color. So I'm doing three stitches of my new one. And I'm not gonna have an outgoing yarn this time. I'll do this again and show you what you do. If I were to break, if I were gonna break this yarn, I would show you how I'd weave it in the outgoing yarn or the old yarn and how I would deal with weaving in the tail of that one, the yarn that I no longer need to use. All right, I'm nearing the beginning of my round again where this gold marker is. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this, but I need to plan on adding my next color, which is this white. So I want to start weaving that one in, again, six or eight or however many stitches you think are appropriate um, before I get to the beginning of the round so that I can start working with it. So this gets a little bit fiddly when you have kind of three, you're not knitting with three yarns, but you are carrying along the white behind. So again, to do that, I'm just gonna get the tail, and I want the tail off to the right so that everything's headed the right direction. And I just go around as if to knit like normal and lay that over the back so that it's just, I'm just carrying that along behind. The next stitch pins it down, same as before. And I gotta keep in mind what my pattern is so I don't mess that up as I'm going along. So I'm just gonna lay that over, wrap my knit stitch, put it back down, and go ahead and knit like normal. Now my next stitch needs to be that darker blue, and that's gonna 
come from back here. So like I said, this can be a little bit fiddly, but when you get used to it, it's really not. And I think it uh, saves quite a, quite a bit of headache later because I don't have a bunch of ends to weave in later on. So that was my accent one. Now I'm gonna go back to this lighter blue or teal color. And when I do that one, I wanna bring along the white over, bring along the white over the working needle again and then pull it back down and the next stitch will we'll pin it down or tack it. Okay, so let's finish this up and I'll show you how I'm gonna deal with the tail of the old yarn that is the outgoing color here in just a moment. So let's take this one here again. This is gonna be my last stitch of the outgoing yarn. Now I'm ready to knit actually knit with the white one and this next row is simply going to use these two colors and this blue is the outgoing so i'm going to go ahead and break this or cut it uh you know three or four inches off to the left here because i don't i don't need this one anymore but i am going to want to weave in the tail during the first eight or ten stitches of this new round all right now i've arranged everything where the background color is off to the right and the accent color or my pattern color is off to the left. So you'll, you can see how that's gonna work. Now again, same thing, this is my outgoing tail, so I wanna lay that up over, pull it back down, and then the next knit stitch is gonna pin that down. It's exactly the same thing. I'm just holding this off to the left, and I'm weaving this in this on this side of my row, beginning of the round marker, every I'm just probably going to do it eight or ten stitches or the length of the tail. That's whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, let's look at the back side of that now. You can see the row I'm on and how I started the white yarn here and that's several stitches back and you can see how it's just woven along behind like every other stitch and then you can see the the outgoing tail which is this darker blue one. You can see that ends here. So when I'm done I can just trim these off. You know, these are where I've woven in the other ones. I can just trim those right off. So while that seems kind of fiddly when you have both an incoming yarn and an outgoing yarn, it, I think it makes everything pretty nice and flat on the backside. You're not tying any knots. And yeah, it seems easier to me than going back and, you know, weaving in a whole bunch of stuff when you're done with your hat. Okay, I'm going to turn my work over and I'm going to take this yellow tail here and show you how you could also go about weaving this in uh, using the duplicate stitch method and then going back weaving it through some floats that already exist. Now if you're not comfortable with my starting incoming yarn, outgoing yarn and weaving it in as you go, you could certainly do it this way with a little darning needle. This is one of the smaller darning needles I have. Now what I'm going to do is because it's difficult to see where the stitches are on the back side, I'm going to take this yellow yarn and I'm going to go back through to the front side and see where the yellow stitch is and I'm going to duplicate it or trace right over the top of it if you will. So I'm going to go right in, back in to where that stitch right there. See where that stitch went in under and I'm going to pull this through. So it's kind of just like tracing over it. Let's turn this around so you can see. Okay, so it came out and then I'm gonna go right in underneath these two legs of this white stitch because I'm tracing the path of the original yellow one. So I'm gonna go through like that and then go right back down in that same spot where it was before. So that is literally duplicating that knit stitch. Okay, so there you go. You can tell if you look closely that that's a little bit thicker than what was before, but you would go about that and do two or three of those. Now I'm going to come up in this next one exactly in that same, same spot at the bottom of that stitch and do the same thing. Okay, and now I'm going to go through these legs of the white one and back down into the bottom of that knit stitch. And then you'd come up here and here and here and here and you do that as many times as you needed to so that you feel secure about it 
I've already woven in this tail. I just wanted to show you how I would go about duplicating those stitches if I were wanting to use that method to weave in. Then what you can do is go into, go ahead and split this stitch. Go ahead and split that on purpose and go in there and weave that in. And you could even do that a second time if you like. Doesn't even have to be in the same color. And as the hat is worn, it will, it will felt together a little bit over time and it will become more secure. So now since my tail is getting a little short, what I can do is go ahead and put my darning needle into this next stitch here and you know get it set up in the next couple of floats actually. And it doesn't have to be in the same color. But I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up like that put my yarn back through the eye of the needle and then I'm going to go ahead and draw that through. Okay, there we go. And then I can just snip that off. So I just wanted to show you now if you had a whole bunch of ends to do that way with the duplicate stitch, you'd, you'd want to do, you'd want a duplicate stitch, I would say four to six anyway, weaving those in and out and then do that with the tail by splitting the floats and going back through there. And that makes a nice finished edge. Um, I kind of prefer my weaving in as you go method. I just learned that and so I'm really kind of digging it and I think I think it looks nice and it makes the finished it makes it easier um, at the end. I hope you found those tips helpful. If you if you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell notification so you don't miss anything or future uploads. Thanks for watching.